But I also want to ask you quickly, uh, I know that I-5 has been a big concern, especially as we're expecting more freezing rain to roll in, that whole I-5 corridor. Uh, we're hearing from the WashDOT traffic Twitter account uh, that uh, WashDOT is doing icicle removal uh, underneath the Seattle Convention Center on northbound I-5. Uh, we have that pulled up as well. What can you tell us about that situation? Uh, that, that's a... First of all, uh, credit to our WashDOT traffic team. They, they do a very good job. That is our most real-time update uh, account, WashDOT underscore traffic uh -huh. on Twitter. It, that That is any, anything that's shared publicly is always there first, and it's a, a tremendous resource, especially if you're traveling this week in the Seattle metro and have a passenger who's able to pull up something quickly um, to, to check on uh, if there's a backup or if there's an incident. Uh, uh, as you can see, the uh, the crews are making sure that it, we had a lot of refreezing last night. The, the temperatures are so cold right now, uh, where and we have so much moisture from the previous storm earlier in the week, where any liquid, even though it had been cleared from the lanes, uh, it, any liquid that accumulates is, is solid ice right now. So crews are being preventative and making sure the icicles do not cause any issues on the I-5. I mean, that, that is one of our most traveled areas in the state, right? Mm -hmm. And that location, I-5 downtown underneath the convention center. Um, unfortunately, we're looking at freezing rain, potentially snow and ice again here in the, in the next 24, 36 hours based on the forecast we are hearing. Um, and that is going to continue to make roadways challenging if not more challenging than we experienced earlier in the week especially on a big travel day uh, the holiday uh, with the holiday weekend approaching uh, a lot of cross-state traffic east-west a lot of traffic going to canada a lot of traffic going to oregon and portland and unfortunately uh, it, it's, a, it's a weather pattern where our we're going to ask the public to make sure they are keep updated realize that conditions can change rapidly and to Take that extra time to slow down, give motorists space, and keep monitoring the situation and be prepared for anything because with the temperatures we're seeing, anything could happen at this point. Mm -hmm. So, James, uh, you know, to, to your point, with the, the incoming ice storm now, uh, what will your crews be out doing uh, through today and into tomorrow morning? So, and, and, and I'm speaking for the Northwest region here, which is... Uh, uh, the, the crash uh, on I-90 right now, I should note, is right on our border with Southwest uh, region. And, and I mentioned that because mountain passes, higher elevations have different types of treatment. Uh, heading down the slope into the lowlands of Seattle Metro, uh, our crews are approaching it the same way as we did for the earlier storm. Uh, just because it, we are cold, but we still have temperatures here in the lowlands that salt with the ice are still has some effectiveness. So th there will be a bit of pre-treating. There, there's a lot of monitoring right now. Um, we, we still do have some icy spots from refreezing overnight that we will be out treating. Uh, right now, though, it, it, uh, we, we are preparing for the next wave. And it is a summer preparation that we had. Uh, our crews have been working around the clock, 12, 12 hours on, 12 hours off, uh, all week. And we'll continue to do so until we're cleared out. And James, I wanted to get back to the situation on I-90. I drive up to the mountains all the time. And so that spot there, you're heading westbound on I-90 coming down the hill. It looks like there's a little bit of an upgrade there uh, near milepost 32. But, uh, you know, my question is, it's just kind of a strange spot because once you are coming down the hill and approaching North Bend, as a driver, oftentimes you kind of feel you're, you're home free from the elements, but obviously not the case there. And, and I think that can, uh, and, and again, this, this, we're seeing temperatures so cold right now where the even places that normally would not necessarily be as, as problematic as, as notorious uh, locations such as the summit itself or the, the past summit itself is, is it, this could happen anywhere given the temperatures we've had given the precipitation we've already accumulated and the precipitation that might be coming in, it's a very good reminder to motorists that uh, it, 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 re it will require diligence traveling in any location uh, and, and pretty much statewide at this point um, over the next 24 to 36 hours until we can get above freezing, before we can get some melt. And, of course, in the elevations in such as these areas, uh, even though we might get some above freezing temperatures in the lowlands, 
this, this still might be precipitation, snow, ice precipitation in the highlands until we, we hit a certain threshold of temperature. It's very possible. James Polian with Washdot this morning here. Thank you for being with us and keep us posted on this situation on I-90. We appreciate you being with us this morning.